Good morning, friends. Welcome to our service uh, of the 22nd Sunday in the season of the Spirit, the season of Pentecost. We are a couple of weeks away from Advent, and so this in this morning's Gospel, we are reminded of our resurrection and the hope that we have of seeing Christ with our own eyes, our resurrection eyes. But we're also reminded in the epistle of his second coming and that he has not come yet and we're still looking forward to his return. And this is an early foreshadowing of the coming of Advent. I must apologize for the overhead screen. Um, in the end, there is much to pop up on the screen and um, I'm told that they're getting a new projector soon. So uh, somebody put the screen through the dryer and it's come out in front. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Let's sing our opening song as we think of our resurrection. My Redeemer lives. So Joel, hope it's so. Son and Holy Spirit. Well, welcome, dear friends. It's lovely to see you here this morning on this uh, somewhat rainy and soggy day. You know, I, I go to nine o'clock and it's lovely because it's peaceful and the rain is falling and the chapel and the garden and uh, the Frangipanis and we're singing 
singing Abide with me and it's so peaceful and I kind of half asleep. And then I come here and it's full of joy and life and children and fire. And it's so wonderful to experience both of these things. And, but it's wonderful to come here and to be lifted up by seeing you all. I hope you're also your heart is lifted by seeing one another. As Christians, we are called to be in community, to be God's people. We are called out together uh, to be his holy people. Let's turn and say good morning and welcome to church. Lovely to see you here today. Good morning and welcome to church. You're all looking lovely and elegant in your winter clothes this morning. Good morning and welcome to church. You're all looking lovely and elegant. What a great song to start with. Now I want to just encourage the children this morning. I'm more and more enforcing my rule. Shh, boys and girls, I'm talking to you. If you are in, in kinder or primary, you need to sit with your parents during church. If you're in secondary, high school, or youth group, you can be with your friends. But if you're in primary and kinder, you need to be with your parents all throughout the service, before you go to Sunday school and after you return. Okay, that's the rule. And Uncle John here is going to chase you if he sees you not with your parents, okay? He's got a, a, a big stick there that he carries around, so look out. All right, just kidding. Let us join together as we come to worship the Lord in the Collect for Purity. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to continue as we sing of the resurrection, my Saviour, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay.
You made a way. 
Lord says, go in peace. The Lord says, my blessing is upon you. The Lord says, I will never leave you or forsake you. The Lord says, I am before you and behind you. I am around you. I am above you. I am below you. You are bound to me and I am bound to you in a holy covenant. I will never leave you or forsake you. The Lord says, I will comfort you. I will guide you to still waters and to green pastures. Do not be afraid. Go forth into the future without fear, with confidence, says the Lord. Go in peace, says the Lord. Go in peace.
The Lord be with you. I want to invite you to join in the part in yellow print, which is the heart of the prayer, the collect. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. You notice how the collect uh, picks up the theme of the second coming of Christ. So the theme of the gospel is the, the resurrection, that we have the hope that we will see him with these eyes, even after we have died. We will see him upon the earth with our own eyes. That means we will be resurrected, the resurrection of the body. But the, the collect is speaking about the second coming, that we will see him when he comes again. So this is the first hint of Advent. And it also comes in the epistle this morning from Thessalonians that I'm going to preach on. We have this hint that the Lord is coming. He hasn't come yet, but he is coming. This is the faith of the church. Please be seated for the first reading from the book of Job. This is a very wonderful reading. And it again raises the subject of the resurrection of the body. In the time of Jesus, there were different sects, S-E-C-T-S, sects among the Jews and the Jewish theologians. And the, the two most famous sects were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees believed in the resurrection. They believed that there would be a resurrection of the body and life everlasting. The Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. And so they were sad, you see. The first reading from Job is read to us this morning by Alexander Mar. Thank you, Alex. Sorry for the bad pun. Okay. Good morning, church. Good morning. Our first reading today is from the book of Job, chapter 19, verses 23 to 27a. Job said, Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer's life lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side and my eyes shall behold, and not another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. This is your first reading in church, isn't it? Yes. Well done. You did beautifully, didn't you? Yeah. Thank you, brother. Very happy for that. And what a great reading about the vision of Job, that he would see his Redeemer. You notice he's very emphatic that I will see him standing on the earth with my own eyes, not another. This is not a prophetic report. He's saying, I am going to see my Redeemer, and it's going to be uh, later in the last days. Um, and he will be on my side. There's a lot in this that's very meaningful. He will be on my side, and I will behold him, not another. It's a very beautiful reading. Job is one of the oldest books in the Old Testament, one of the most ancient books. And here we have the faith of the resurrection and of the Redeemer who is coming in human form to save us. Let us turn to the psalm on page 2 and we will say the psalm from side to side by whole verse beginning on this side. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord, give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer which does not come from lying lips. Weigh my heart, summon me by night, melt me down, you will find no impurity in me. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law, in your paths my feet shall not stumble. Show me your loving, marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against them. Amen. 
from the wicked who assault me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The uh, theme reading which I'm going to preach on is read to us by Selina Lamb. Thank you, Selina. Morning. The epistle reading from 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2. As to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as though from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is already here. Let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the lawless one is revealed, the one destined for destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. Do you not remember that I told you these things when I was still with you? But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, Beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. For this purpose, he called you through our proclamation of the good news, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now, may our Lord Jesus Christ come, Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Scott. You're complete. Let us stand. We're going to learn a new song today for our gradual hymn. Something is buzzing. Is it, is it the bass Yes. Okay. Maybe after this song we can turn it off for a while. Let's stand and sing. We're going to sing a gradual song, uh, which is a new song for us in our congregation on the darkest day of all. It's a Good Friday and Easter song, of course.
please remain standing for the Alleluia. be seated for the announcements. This coming Friday, the, we have a Friday-Saturday double whammy for the women's ministry. On the Friday, the some sisters are meeting here in the school uh, for their monthly meeting. And on the Saturday night, the ladies' night fellowship will be meeting for a special end-of-year fellowship, uh, which is including some snacks and food if you want to bring to have a celebration together. Uh, these are two very special gatherings. Uh, so do please sign up and uh, come and join the, the Chinese Speaking Sisters Fellowship on Friday and the International Ladies' Night on Saturday. Next Sunday is a Remembrance Sunday when we give thanks for those who have given their lives that we may be free and live with freedom of speech and freedom of conscience and choices. So uh, we will be having the uh, bugler, the French bugler, David, will be coming to play uh, Taps and Revalli for us, as he usually does. Uh, we're very honored that he comes to both services. He's from the Macau Symphony Orchestra. And um, so very thankful. He's a Roman Catholic, but he comes and blesses us um, each, each year. So we will be um, having our remembrance and uh, reading Binion's poem and so forth uh, next Sunday. Everyone is welcome, laying the wreath. Um, Friendship Sunday is coming at the end of the month. Now, Friendship Sunday is at around the time of St. Andrew's Day. 
And the word Andrew means manly or courageous, having valor. And so a a Andrew was the name of a manly man. And uh, this is move at Movember when the men grow moustaches. Uh, I don't grow moustache because I don't have much to grow. But um, some men are growing moustaches to raise awareness about men's health. So I thought it would be good to have a focus on men's spiritual health. So I'm appealing to uh, two or three men in the church to share their testimonies, uh, just five or ten minutes on a Friendship Sunday. And we will have a special Friendship Sunday lunch together. Uh, Miss Lucy has found a new caterer, so we're going to try a new caterer. So that'll be fun. And uh, try some different food. It's always good to have a little variety. And um, it will be a focus. And Dr. Nathan Kwan, uh, sometimes attend our nine o'clock service, is a bagpipe player, as you know. So he will be coming to play the bagpipes in honor of St. Andrew. So it's a very St. Andrew themed Sunday next week for Men's Sunday. So do invite, this is, sorry, this is the 27th of November, not next Sunday. So do please uh, invite your friends uh, on the fourth Sunday in the month to Friendship Sunday for the men's testimonies, we hope. Now, if the men have no courage and they're, they're not valorous like Andrew, then there's a woman waiting to share her testimony. So guys, please step up. We would be very embarrassed if no men will come forward to share their testimony on Friendship Sunday. Come on, guys, man up. This is the very most appropriate time to say man up. The following Sunday, we're going to have lunch again. We have a lot of lunch coming up. And that is going to be a wedding lunch on the 4th of December because Hilda and Michael are getting married. Woohoo! And so Hilda and Michael would like to invite us all to lunch. And because the chapel is very small, and most of us know and love Hilda, we have her friends, but we cannot all fit in the chapel. So uh, only the family and close friends can attend the wedding. However, we will have, um, what do they call it? Action replay. On, <laughs> on Sunday morning, we will ask Michael and, and Hilda to come up. I don't know whether she'll wear her bridal gown or not, but uh, the bride and groom will come up and they will say their vows so we can all witness and enjoy. Is that good or what? Yes, we want to hear, right? And, and, then, uh, and then we will have a wedding brunch with cupcakes from the Wind Macau. So it should be a very wonderful uh, wedding cake and wedding brunch. So thank you, Hilda and Michael, for shouting us lunch. I should also add that the Friendship Sunday men's lunch is paid for by one of the youth. It's donated by Ellis. So Ellis has donated the Friendship Sunday lunch for us for Movember. So if Ellis can donate the lunch, Men can rise up and share their testimonies. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, guys. Please invite your men friends. I'm, I'm counting on you guys. Christ, Christ is counting on, on us. All right. Um, also, of course, we are signing up for Friendship Sunday, for the sorry anniversary lunch on the 18th of December. We will have a combined service. There's no 11 o'clock on the 18th of December. Uh, I'm mentioning this now because we need you to sign up for the lunch. All the information is on page 8. It's a really good deal and a really good Christmas lunch. It's a proper first class Christmas lunch. Someone is going to pay the difference so you can enjoy Christmas lunch at a very cheap rate with your family and friends. If you, however, if you can't afford the 150 for an adult, you can pay whatever you can afford. It's always the system we have. We don't want anybody to miss out because of money. The church or someone else will cover it. In fact, we always get someone to cover it. We never have to draw on church funds, thank God. So someone always provides. Not the same someone, different someones. So the Lord has been good to us. So, and we're going to be celebrating 200 years of people worshipping in our church. Now that's quite unusual. We are possibly the oldest church of Asia in the modern era. So that's really a wonderful legacy. We must celebrate it. Amen? Amen. Uh, as I've said, this is not the, the, the anniversary of the building. The building is 100 years old. We did that in June already. We had a special cake and a service at Morrison. This is your anniversary. It's the anniversary of the people of God, an international community worshipping God in Protestant Christian fashion here in Macau. And it's a great privilege that we are able to observe this 200 years uh, since worship began. Actually, it's over 200 years, we know, because there were weddings conducted and funerals before that. Uh, but of the official weekly worship, this is the 200th anniversary this year. And now the service will be at 10 a.m. at the Chinnery Ballroom in the Artisan Grand Lapa. So don't come here at 11, there'll be nobody here. 10 a.m. Now the service is open to anybody. We can put chairs around the side, but 
for the lunch, if you're staying for the games and the lunch, as we do, then you need to sign up with Miss Lucy and friends after the service. Please pay a deposit to guarantee your place. Please make sure that she has your name, the number of people you're bringing, and your phone number. No correspondence will be entered into. If you come later and all the places are taken and you said, oh, but I meant to put someone down or I thought I put someone down, Miss Lucy will have the written evidence, okay? And the evidence will stand for or against. So please don't miss out. When we had our 10th anniversary of this congregation, we had 240 people. We have 180 places. Now, Miss Lucy, being the very clever person that she is, has figured out that we can get an extra 24 places because there's a private room attached to the main function room. Now, when you're eating lunch, who cares if you're in a private room or in the main hall? It doesn't matter, right? So we have found an extra 24 places. That means there's 204 places now. So we're really hoping that everybody can fit in and can join this lunch. I'm so happy about this good news. So do please sign up. Last week we already had 35 people signed up. The places are filling up fast. We want you all to come. Please don't invite friends yet. This is not an outreach. This is a celebration of 200 years of Christian worship. So this is for our congregation to start with. In a few weeks, if we still have seats left, we will, we will ask you to invite friends and to sign up for that. But at the moment, it's just for our congregation, and I think we can fill 204 seats if we try from our congregation. All right. Um, so I just commend to you all the notices. Now, a very special notice is that on page 11, today is also the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. So please, use the, please take the bulletin home and use the prayers on page 11 every day this week. Please pray for the Persecuted Church. Finally, today, um, uh, no, penultimately, sorry, today is the last day to sign up for the Nativity Play. So if your child would like to be a shepherd or a sheep or a wise man or an angel or something uh, in the play, a singer or whatever, please sign up uh, with the Sunday school teachers, please Miss Selena or Crystal or the others, and you can sign up, the last chance to sign up. And last but not least, today we are saying farewell to one of our families, to the Laete family, uh, Bruno and Francie Ellen, and to Naomi and Maria. Maria has been a very faithful, regular member of our youth group. She is, of course, the cousin of our youth leaders, Matthias and Jonatas. Uh, and Francie is the sister of uh, Pastor Chris. So they're here in the back. Can you wave a hand, guys? And um, there's Bruno is there. Francie is in the back with Naomi. And so we want to just wish them uh, all the, the very, 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 very best. Um, would you mind to come? We'll just say a, a quick prayer for you. Uh, we haven't seen much of them in, in the last few years because they've been moving to the other side of Macau and so on. Uh, but this is their last Sunday and they're returning to Brazil permanently. Bruno's going to work with his dad. So uh, we will not be seeing them again for a while. And it's quite sad for John and Matt, I know, and for Chris, I'm sure. So Chris, would you come and help me pray? Thank you, brother. All right. Bless you guys. Is Maria here? Maria went to Oh, Maria has <laughs> gone to the shop. Okay. All right, I'll use, just use this and pass it. Um, John, would you come and help us pray, since you're, you're dressed for the occasion? <laughs> Lord, we just thank you for this family. Um, we thank you, Lord, that we've been blessed not only by Bruno and Francie and Naomi and Maria, but also that not only that they've been part of our church family for many years now, but also that um, they've been literally relatives of Chris and of John, and Matt, and uh, we thank you for this family connection. We thank you that Naomi has come into our life during this time and been born uh, also into our church here with them. And we pray your blessing on them as they go forth into the world to Brazil. Please watch over them, keep them safe. Please uh, bless, bless uh, Bruno's business as he works with his father in Brazil. Uh, please prosper them, provide for them, defend them. We, we pray for the girls for their future lives. We pray that you would provide them with the right pathway in life, lead them in a good pathway, provide them with the right husband and bless them with family uh, in the future years. We also pray for their ministry, Lord, that you would increase their commitment and involvement in their church in Brazil and bless their ministry. Uh, we pray, Lord, for great joy for them, that as they go home, they will not be perplexed, but they will have your peace and your presence with them. 
In your name we pray. Amen. And I'll ask uh, Pastor Chris to say the final blessing for his sister's family. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to have um, this of my family here in Macau. It has been really a great blessing for us. And I pray that you may bless them, that you may surround them with your love and your protection, and that they may really uh, go back to Brazil and uh, may find more open doors and open opportunities, Lord, and more uh, a great welcoming there and bless their transition back there, Lord. And protect them from all evil, from all the difficulties that uh, they may face there. Thank you so much for the blessed they are, Lord, and uh, we'll miss you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. Go in peace. I think that word was for you earlier. Peace be with you. Thank you. Bless you, darling. Bless you, bless you. Bless you, handsome man. All right, guys. Thank you. I'll be with you. So do please take the chance to give them a hug and give them, say a word of blessing um, after, during morning tea. Let's stand as we go to Sunday school. A couple of minutes late. I'm sorry. Um, I think you need the full time in Sunday school, don't you? Okay, so I've, I've messed up the time already. So can you come back at 12.35 to give you the full time? Sunday school teachers, is that okay? Crystal, you can hear? 12.35. Can someone please tell all the teachers 12.35, not 12.30? Thank you, Alex, to give you the full time. May your mercy surround me. that you would deliver us from false fears and anxiety, give us the confidence of our faith, the hope of the resurrection life. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends. So as I mentioned this morning, I want to speak to you about the epistle reading. Um, I think I'm going to take off the headset, Isla, um, because I don't have to do any children's songs or jump around till later for communion. So let's do that. We're trying to, I'm trying to get the children out of the Sunday school out by 12.45. Uh, now we're trying to finish the service within two hours. Uh, in my old age, I'm giving in to peer pressure. <laughs> Um, so we'll see how it goes. I've already went five minutes late. But um, my wife tells me the Sunday school needs a full 45 minutes each week to do all the things they have to do. So it means we have to occupy ourselves in here uh, either by sermon or small groups and sharing for 45 minutes, which is okay. That's a pleasure. At least it's my pleasure. Huh. So um, in this morning's epistle reading, it's on page three in the bulletin. I'd encourage you to open <clears throat> to Thessalonians in, in the bulletin there at least, or your Bible if you have it. We have um, here an example of first century fake news. The only church were, was being troubled in Thessalonica was being troubled by fake news. Now, we've heard in this, in this recent decade a lot about fake news. And when I was a boy, I didn't remember hearing about fake news. If the Australian Broadcasting Corporation said it, then it was true. If they said something was happening in Cambodia, then that was happening in Cambodia. And generally in those days, um, in 20, 30, 40 years ago, journalists worked to a high standard. 
A couple of years ago in Hong Kong, the bishop arranged for the clergy to have a talk from a uh, professor of journalism, a woman in Hong Kong, Chinese woman who had been a journalist for many, many years. She's in her 60s and she had been a working journalist and then a professor of journalism, teaching journalism in, in universities. And she shared to us the dire state of journalism today, that many, many, many uh, journalists today are not concerned with truth. They're not concerned with checking facts. They're concerned with getting clicks, uh, click, clickbait. Uh, on uh, online articles. They know that many of their articles will go online and they want sensational headlines, uh, sensational articles. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. And this is really like an epidemic in our world which has welled up in the last 10 years. And this has of course been exploited by the right and by the left in politics. Um, it's been uh, exploited also by people online, nerds I guess, online nerds who like to make fun of us and of our gullibility. And so we have a situation today where our news media channels, the mainstream media, are very polarized between right and left. Some are in the middle, of course, but some are highly polarized. And even an organization uh, like the BBC, which in the past has been highly trustworthy, uh, is no longer really trustworthy. They, they regularly publish things that are biased to the left, biased against China particularly at the moment. There's been a great deal of anti-China rhetoric in the Western media, uh, which is false. Nuri Vitachi has kind of developed himself a whole new career uh, in Hong Kong, founding uh, a Friday uh, called the Friday Media Group, which really focuses on publishing accurate fact-checked um, information and journalism, uh, and of kind of opposing the anti-Hong Kong and anti-China rhetoric which is coming out of Western media. And just this week he gave an example of the Sunday Times in the UK which uh, published a, a banner headline um, speaking of one of their journalists who had come to Hong Kong to cover the news in Hong Kong and it says um, something to the effect, I can't get the words exactly right, but to the effect that um, this, their journalist going to Hong Kong was one of the first one of the first journalists back in Hong Kong after Fortress Hong Kong opens up. And uh, this is, of course, really portrays a false image of the situation in Hong Kong and Macau. It gives the impression that Hong Kong has closed to the, been closed to the world. Of course, it's digging uh, a poke at the Chinese zero COVID policy, uh, which has now become politicized, of course, for some time. Whether you wear a mask or not is a symbol of whether you are right or left leaning in politics where you stand in regard to zero COVID has become not a matter of common sense and opinion, but a matter of political prejudice. And so uh, this, this headline in the Sunday Times declared that this journalist was one of the first back in Hong Kong after Fortress Hong Kong had opened up, which is just absolutely a load of rubbish. And um, in fact, of course, there is at any given time a body of hundreds of foreign journalists who are stationed in Hong Kong and who are reporting on Hong Kong. And there are many, many international journalists who come and go in and out of Hong Kong all the time. So it was a gross, gross misrepresentation of Hong Kong as a sort of place of oppression where journalists were not free to report. And, and they reported that their journalist had, had reported that children's author, children's publisher had been imprisoned by the evil Hong Kong government. And what had actually happened, it wasn't a children's publisher at all, uh, but it was an anti-China political uh, publisher who had published a cartoon uh, which had uh, um, been uh, publishing uh, some content in the cartoon about industrial relations and so on, which was considered subversive by the Hong Kong government. So it was misrepresented by the London Sunday Times as the evil Hong Kong government uh, prosecuting a uh, poor children's book publisher, whereas in fact that was far from the truth. So Nuri has given himself a whole new career um, attacking this kind of misrepresentation in the Western press. But the issue of fake news uh, is not only one found in East-West relations, uh, so there are some, and it's a very, very funny subject um, because in the last 10 years, people who should know better have been posting stuff on social media, particularly Facebook, of course, but also Instagram and other social media, which subsequently one finds out is nonsense. 
But actually, when you see it for the first time, if you have an iota of common sense, you should think, yeah, that doesn't sound right to me. For example, you know, some years ago, there were all these posts on Facebook saying, uh, Facebook was going to steal your underpants and you had to wear a tinfoil hat and, um, and publish a legal statement from the American uh, legal uh, documents, uh, law number 407C, that would protect your rights to your pictures and your intellectual property. And that if you publish this meme, if you publish this uh, statement on your Facebook, then you would be protected from people stealing your intellectual property, your photos and your Facebook uh, publications. Uh, this, of course, is utter nonsense. Uh, the moment that you signed up for Facebook, you gave up your rights to your personal photos and information. The moment that you publish something on Facebook, it's on the internet. That means it's public property, hello? So there's no law in the United States that's going to protect you if you publish a meme on Facebook and you say, this is my property, thou shalt not touch it or copy it. You know, there's no law that protects you from that. It's just sheer nonsense. And I saw this meme being published and repeated by professors in Macau. I will not say professors of what subject, but I saw university professors and school teachers publishing these things, thinking that by reposting a meme, which they hadn't bothered to check, they would be protected from people copying their photos from Facebook. Now, you're all looking a bit glum, and I suspect that some of us have, have fallen into these traps. Now, there are people on social media who, I think they're nerds, there's a nerd army out there, who enjoys publishing rubbish and inviting you to repost it. Because they enjoy making fun of us without us knowing. And they particularly target Christians. One of the examples of this that I saw recently was of people reposting quotes from C.S. Lewis. Now, I have a very little of, of, uh, sort of awareness or understanding of C.S. Lewis, but I have enough to know that when Lewis is posting late 21st century, is quoted as saying late 21st century pop psychology, that it's not C.S. Lewis. And one, you know, you read these things on social media and it says, C.S. Lewis said you should be kind to your cat and kiss your mum every morning and be a good human being. And I'm like, no, C.S. Lewis didn't say that. And it's just, they write, they write, people write these things so that it's just kind of believable. You know what they're doing is they're making fun of us. They're making fun of our gullibility and our stupidity. And we're not even aware of it. And so we repost it. And these things get reposted hundreds of thousands of times by gullible Christians thinking that they're promoting the good message of C.S. Lewis about you know, being nice to your cat and kissing your mum every morning or whatever it is. I'm exaggerating, obviously. Fake news, sorry. Um, so fake news is, there's a whole section of fake news targeted at gullib the gullibility of Christians. Guys, we should not fall into these things. Now, it's very easy to check if something is, is true because there are, there are websites that focus on debunking fake news. The most famous, of course, is Snopes, S-N-O-P-E-S. And if you haven't heard of Snopes, you need to become aware of it. Because when you see something online and it, you just have a quiver in your liver that it's a little bit dodgy, then you should go on Snopes and you just cut and paste it and see what Snopes says. And nine times out of ten, you'll find that that thing that you're going, yeah, it's a bit dodgy, sure enough, it's not real. It's fake news. Now, fake news has been responsible for some very funny stuff in, in recent years. For example, six years ago, there was a news report that the Pope was endorsing Donald Trump as a, as a political candidate. And this was picked up and reposted by major US mainline mainstream news services. Of course, for political reasons. Now, you might think, oh, that's interesting, the Pope is endorsing Donald Trump. Well, of course, the Pope is a Christian and Donald Trump is with the Christian right. I guess that, you know, the, 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 the right is anti-abortion, so the Pope is... So there's just enough truth in it that you think, well, it might be true, so you repost it. But of course, it's a load of rubbish. The Pope is never going to endorse uh, the, the political candidate of a particular party, uh, particularly not one so divisive as, as the right and left uh, wars in, in culture wars in the US. So it was just completely untrue. The poor old Pope got credited with, with endorsing Donald Trump six years ago. One, uh, a more recent one, which you might have seen, if you, if you go on social media, is that at the beginning of the war in the Ukraine, there was uh, many social media video clips of the ghost of 
Kiev. Did you see the ghost of Kiev? The ghost of Kiev was a fighter pilot who was dashing about the skies over Kiev, shooting down Russian uh, planes, Russian bombers and fighter planes. And he was characterized as a, as a, a fighter ace, you know, like Douglas Bader in World War II. He was a fighter ace. And before the war was one week old, he'd already shot down 40 enemy planes over Kiev. And everybody was reposting this. And it got reposted like millions of times and got millions of hits. Uh, until somebody realized that the video, this very dynamic video clip of this um, fighter jet, you know, having dogfights over the skies of the Ukraine and people talking Russian in the background, this was actually a video clip from an online game. It was a video from, a, it was no ghost of Kiev, it was completely manufactured. Um, but many of us saw this and, I, and were taken in and I, I to say I was one of them. So, oh, the ghost of Kiev, that's pretty cool. You know, these guys fighting the Russian uh, fighters and bombers and, and fighting for freedom. Now, isn't that cool? Well, it, it turns out it was a load of rubbish. There was a, a case um, a few years ago when the French president reposted a picture of, of the uh, rainforest burning famously. And it, it was fake news. It was a fake picture that someone had manufactured and he got sucked into this. And sometimes even that presidents and national leaders uh, get sucked in and people will manufacture photos. They'll take a photo from one situation maybe 20 years ago and they'll repost it as something that's happening now. So we have to be very, very careful. And I generally have a rule of thumb. I would say don't repost something unless you personally know 100% that is true. Don't repost something unless you personally know for a fact 100% that is true. Otherwise, we're part of the problem. Now, it's not difficult to check. With most of these things, if you Google on Snopes or you just Google, you can find out within a minute or 30 seconds whether it's true or not. And like I say, it always amazes me how, how Christians and professors and teachers and people, who, business, top business people who should know better, repost stuff which is not true. So what does this tell us? It tells us that we're gullible. It tells us that we are subject to fears, and to misinformation. We are easily manipulated. Now, this is not a new problem, and we find it in the epistle. Uh, now, it is a problem that's exploded out of hand because of the power of modern media and all the social media we have and how it's reposted and reposted millions of times within a short space of time. We have made ourselves subject to fake news. There's another problem that we find in today's epistle, and that is the problem of FOMO. In Australia, in the last three years, house property values almost doubled. And the main reason why they doubled, it had to do with COVID and different things, but the main reason, and government policies about uh, first home buyers and so on, but the, one of the main reasons that property prices doubled was FOMO, fear of missing out. And um, so what happened was that people were uh, young first home buyers were like afraid that they would miss out on a home. So when the interest rates were almost zero, they unwisely took out huge mortgages. Um, and of course, being young and a little bit greedy, a lot of people got the biggest houses with four bedrooms and a swimming pool in a good location, rather than getting a 300,000 bungalow, a basic home that they could afford, you know, they purchased $1 million houses in Sydney and Canberra and Melbourne that they couldn't really afford and they took out huge mortgages and mortgaged them to the hilt. Well, of course, what happened? The interest rates, the war happened in the Ukraine, uh, the, the, uh, the, the inflation recession began to happen and interest rates are now rising around the world and I hope that you've not been caught up in that. But many people, because of greed, because of, uh, have t took out in Australia, took out a second mortgage or maybe just a first mortgage that they couldn't afford. So now their interest rate bill each month is shooting up, shooting up, and they're in real trouble. Now you find this fear of missing out. And it's something that affects our lives. You have probably have some FOMO. You probably have things that you're afraid of missing out. You might be afraid of missing out on marriage. It's very easy to solve that. Just talk to a married person. That'll cure you. <laughs> you, might, you might have fear of not having children. Very easy to fix that. Just talk to a parent. <laughs> That'll cure you very quickly. Just kidding. Sorry for my facetious humor. Um, 
We have fear of not seeing the world, fear of not fulfilling our bucket list, fear of being rejected or not being loved. We have fear of missing out lots of things, fear of not... At the moment, a big FOMO that we have in Macau is the fear of not being able to travel, fear of being stuck. We're afraid that we're missing out on life, missing out on business. And perhaps to some extent we are, I understand. Not many to say that's wrong. But we have their fears, fears of missing out. Fear of missing out on Christmas with the family, whatever it is. So I want to ask you today, what are you afraid of missing out? What is the fear that's lodged in your heart that you're afraid of missing out? Because as Christians, we are called to live without fear. We're not to be people with fear. We're not to live in fear of missing out. We're to live in confidence and thanks for the blessings that God has given us. And there are many things to give thanks for in this life that we have here in Macau. So we find these two problems in the epistle today, fake news and FOMO. And I'm now going to uh, explain to you how. And isn't it interesting, as you'll discover, how these are not new. They're very, very ancient human problems. Let's have a look at uh, Thessalonians here today. It says, as to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the word coming is parousia in the Greek, and it refers to the second coming. The parousia means the presence, the arrival, or the second coming of Jesus. And they were the early Christians in the first century. Uh, there were many Christians who were still alive, who had seen Jesus feed the 5,000, heal the sick, raise the dead, and, and there were others whose parents had seen it. There were also hundreds of people alive who had seen the resurrected Christ. The scriptures tell us in Corinthians that over 500 men had seen him alive. Well, that's just the men, specifically men. So there's probably a thousand people or more. There were more women involved in the movement after all at times. So there may be over a thousand people, let alone children, who'd seen the risen Christ. That's a lot of eyewitnesses. So the early church was living in the joyful faith and confidence of the power of Christ, of his resurrection from the dead, and his promise that he would return. And in Thessalonians, they were expecting him to return now, within their lifetime. They would probably be very shocked to discover that 2,000 years later, we're still looking forward to the return of Christ. But they uh, were, were expecting, at any time, the imminent return of Christ. And so someone had spread, someone got on their little internet, social media, and had sent out a meme saying, Jesus has returned, and you've missed out. That's what had happened. Someone was sending out the message by word and by letter to the early church saying, Jesus has returned, and we've seen him, and you've missed out. Now, when you hear that, it's laughable, right? It's just, how could they be so stupid? Well, think for a moment. Think about the things you've posted on media. I know some of you have posted things that are, not, that are silly and not true. People who should know better. We've posted dumb stuff because it, it looks about right, you know? And then, you know, when you Google it and you think about it, you're like, nah, that's not right. We can be very gullible. We can be taken in very easily. Well, the early Christians were like that. So somebody was spreading the news by word of mouth and by letter and saying, Christ has returned. The parousia, that's the judgment day. That's when Jesus would come. The Old Testament refers to the day of the Lord, Yom Yahweh, when the Lord would return to earth and would usher in the new age of, of the kingdom of God on earth. It was foretold by the prophet Daniel that the king would come and that he would establish a kingdom that would fill the whole world and never end. And they were looking forward to the day of the Lord when the Messiah would come. And we would call it now the second coming of Christ and Judgment Day, this idea that's been picked up by Hollywood and media, the day when everything's going to change and nothing's going to be the same and the world is going to be built into a, a heavenly paradise. And so he, he's talking to them about the coming of the Lord. And he says, and of our being gathered together with him. So you notice right off the bat that he tells them one of the signs of the second coming of Christ is that all the people of Christ will be gathered together with Jesus. So that's a clue right there. They should know that he hasn't come yet, because the gathering hasn't come yet. You hear all these words in media, judgment day, the gathering. They all come from the Bible. They're biblical ideas that, that Hollywood picks up on and turns into fiction. The gathering together of God's people, the gathering together unto him, hasn't happened yet. So he says, we beg you, and he uses the word Adelphoi. Adelphoi means brothers and sisters. The early church referred to each other as brothers and sisters. Very often I'm talking with Miss Lucy about planning events for the church, and she will refer to the sisters and the brothers. 
And, you know, in my Aussie kind of down-to-earthness, you're also, Lucy's also Aussie, you know, I'll be sort of like, uh, it's a bit squir squirmy for me, like brothers and sisters, because I grew up in the Anglican church. I didn't grow up in the evangelical Protestant church, where it's, good morning, brother, good morning, sister. Now, the Philippines, it's normal, right? Everybody's brother or sister or auntie or uncle or Lola or grandma or grandpa or something. Everybody has a familial honorific title, right? You understand me? But in Australia, it's like, g'day, mate. You know, everybody's like, hello, mate. You know, that's it. There's no sister, brother. If I went to my, my friends at school, at their school reunion, and I said, hello, brothers, how are you? You know, someone would punch me. <laughs> it's like, you just don't talk like that, you know. So it's a bit weird, but actually it's correct. The, St. Paul referred to the early church, and the early Christians called each other brother and sister. Have a look around you. These are your brothers and sisters. Are you okay with that? We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And this is how he refers to the church. There's another term for describing the church as the ecclesia, the called out ones. So the church are the called out ones who are called out of the world. We are called to be different as followers of Christ. Different in a good way. But we are also called brothers and sisters. That's part of how we're different. So we are brothers and sisters. And he says, we beg you, we beg you, we beg you. Feel the passion. Brothers and sisters, don't be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed. Now, this, this word uh, shaken, let me find it here, uh, sal, uh, saluthani, it's the word saluthani. Saluthani is the word for a ship being tossed by a storm. So if you've ever been in a ship, on a cruise ship, in a storm, uh, usually the cruise ships try and go when there's no storms, but if you've ever been in a ship, in a storm, or you've been seasick at sea when it's a rough sea, you'll understand the feeling of being shaken and tossed by the waves of the sea. And this is the meaning of this word here. It says, do not be quickly shaken. It means so shaken up that you're sick to your stomach. This means do not be quickly shaken. Shaken but not stirred. Do not be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed. This is a word for us today. It's incredibly modern. Paul is saying to us, don't be alarmed by fake news. You know, recently, a few years ago, when there was the invasion of the capital, so-called, uh, was it the 6th of January, and the right-wing media put out a news report that said that the FBI had coordinated this invasion. And uh, it was put out for political reasons, it had no truth truth in it at all, but lots of people wanted to believe it. They wanted to believe that the FBI had done this and that it was a plot or something, uh, which, which it wasn't. So he says, don't be shaken, don't be alarmed, don't believe every rubbish that you hear. Now there's a lot of speculation about war with Taiwan and China. Now that, that may come, I don't know, but the scriptures tell us don't be shaken, don't be alarmed, don't be afraid. As Christians, we take things as they come. And we live by truth, not by gossip. We don't live by fear. Uh, we live by reality and truth. So this is the message here. It says, don't be shaken in mind or alarmed. And he says, either by spirit or word or letter. That's so modern in a way. He's saying that fake news comes by spirit, by word, and by the written word, the letter. That's the letter of written word. So, and this is how fake news can come. It can come through the craziness of our minds, through maybe a spiritual delusion or psychological delusion. It can come through word of mouth, people talking rubbish over their beers and coffees. Or it can come through the written media. And today we have television and video as well. We have a fourth demon to deal with, the, the visual media, right? So you can even see the ghost of Kiev flitting over Ukraine. And it's not real. It's not true, even though you've seen the video. So in those days, they had the, the spirit, the, 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 the demonic and the craziness misguiding them. They had... Word of mouth, gossip, false information. They had written word that was false. People were writing to the church saying, Jesus has returned and you've missed out. Can you believe that? That was happening in, in Thessalonica, in the early church. And people were believing it. They're like, oh God, no, we've missed out. We've been left behind. Paul's like, you dummies. You haven't been left behind. That's something John would say, right? You dummies. You know, but we're all kind of dummies, right? We're gullible when we see something that has a scary... Maybe it could be true. I mean, he rose from the dead. Maybe he's come already and we've been left behind. No. Well, how do you know? So we'll come to that. So he's the, And he says, you're taking this as though it was from us. 
In other words, as though it was from a reliable authority. I teach the children in school, when you read something, you will believe something, you must go to the reliable source, to the original source, the original information. Find out where the original source comes from. Don't believe everything you read, because there's so much misinformation now. So we have to go to a good source, a reliable source of information. And it's very, when it comes to the news, it's very hard now. I don't trust the BBC anymore. I certainly don't trust CNN. Um, I don't trust Fox News. I don't trust the right or the left. They all have access to grind. It's very hard to find a news source that one can trust. So one really has to be shrewd and check things out. I, what I tend to do is listen to a little bit of all of them, so then I'm totally confused. Uh, <laughs> So, um, and he says, by word of a letter, as though from us, so they're getting this fake news, as though it's from the apostles. So someone is writing as if from St. Paul, as if from St. Peter. I mean, nothing new under the sun, right? Today we have internet scammers who write rubbish to trick us into thinking that this is what C.S. Lewis said. And back in the day, they had Peter write, people writing letters to the church as if from the apostles saying, Jesus has already come and you've missed out. And we think, how stupid were they back then? Well, if they were here today, they would say, how stupid are we for the stuff that we repost on social media, you see. So um, it's to the effect that the, the day of the Lord is already here. We've missed it. It's past. And then he says, let no one deceive you in, this way, in any way. And he's given two bits of evidence. The first bit of evidence is implicit. You haven't been gathered. If the Lord had returned, you would know because you've been gathered. So you haven't been gathered. There's no gathering of the saints. The Lord hasn't returned. You will know. It's not going to be sort of in secret as if you would somehow miss it. When he comes, he will come on the clouds with power and great glory, the scripture says. And nobody will miss it. Every eye will see, says the scripture. And every knee will bow. Secondly, he says, and there's this strange prophecy, that the day will not come until the rebellion comes and the lawless one is revealed. So Paul had a prophecy which they believed that there would be an antichrist figure, there would be a lawless one who would come before the end of the age proclaiming themselves to be God and would set themselves up in the temple. I always find this interesting because of course the Temple Mount today is occupied by the mosque and Muhammad has himself set up there. I'm not saying that's the fulfillment of this uh, prophecy. I'm not saying Muhammad is the antichrist at all, but it is interesting that the temple is now occupied by, by uh, the followers of Muhammad and by that situation. It's just interesting. I'm not saying that he's the Antichrist. But um, it's interesting. And um, I don't, we don't know who the lawless one is. We don't know what this prophecy means. And so I would encourage you not to waste a moment of your life speculating about whether it's Muhammad or somebody else. It's just a waste of energy. Probably when this, this prophecy is fulfilled, again, we will all know. And there will be no confusion. There will be somebody who will set themselves up as God in the world, who will bring destruction to the world before Christ returns. So don't waste your energy trying to guess who it is. When it happens, you'll know. So Paul says, neither of these things have happened. Therefore, the Lord has not returned, and you haven't missed out. Don't, don't stress. Okay? Now, we should take this to heart. We should be people who don't get affected by fear of missing out and by fake news, and we let our lives be churned up and distressed. Don't be distressed about fear of wars that haven't happened yet, about things that, that could be in the future. Of course, we need to be wise and we need to see the signs and we need to do what's right for our families. But we should not be people who live in fear or in, in the influence of fake information and fake news. And then um, it goes on and he says, We give thanks for you to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you. Um, as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit, through belief in the truth. For this purpose he called you through our proclaiming the gospel, the good news, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we give thanks to God because you've been saved and you share in the glory of Jesus. So then, again, Adelphoi, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast. I often refer to these terms when I've preached to you from the scriptures. It's stakete and kritete. These are the commands of the Roman centurion to uh, a line of Roman soldiers forming a Roman formation, a turtle or a phalanx. They have their spears, they're standing on the ground, they're infantry, and they're facing a cavalry charge. And the centurion will cry, stakete! So you're facing what seems like overwhelming danger or fear or trouble, depression, 
possible difficulties and the centurion cries stakete christ of course is our captain he is our security centurion and so paul says so then brothers and sisters stakete and critete it means stand firm it means dig your spear in the ground point it towards the oncoming ca cavalry and hold the line stand shoulder to shoulder with your brothers and sisters in christ do not be overrun in your faith by the, the attacks of life and the problems of life, by the fears of life, by spiritual battles that come. Stand firm, shoulder to shoulder, with your spear forward facing the enemy, your spear of prayer and of the Word of God, and your Christian, the righteousness we have in Christ. We can stand firm. Kratete means hold fast. Don't give up. Don't give away. Don't give up easily. Don't fade away. Now, what do we do when we come to church? When we read the scripture, when we, when we read the creed together, we are stakete and kritete. We are standing firm and we are holding fast. When we read the scripture, when we do our daily Bible readings, we are standing firm in what? In the apostolic faith. So he finishes by saying, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions you are taught by us, that is by the true apostles, the followers of Jesus, either by word of mouth or by letter. So he says, we've taught you in person, by word of mouth, and we've written you letters. What letters? They're here in the epistles and the gospels, I would say also. So he says, stand firm in the words of God that are in the gospels and the epistles. Hold fast in your faith. This is what we're doing every Sunday. We're coming here to strengthen our faith, to encourage one another, to teach our children, to teach other people's children, to stand firm, to hold fast, to, that the word of God may spread in the world. That more people may know the gospel of salvation and may share in the ultimate place in heaven and the glory of Christ in heaven with God. We don't want people to miss out. We want the word to spread. So we form a community. We are a phalanx. We are a Roman turtle. We are a, a, a military. We are a Roman formation. We stand firm. We stand. How do we stand firm in? He says, in the, in the tradition, the faith taught by us, by word of mouth or by letter. Don't be influenced by the media and the TV and the video and the rubbish that you read. Stand firm in the Word of God. Stand firm in your faith. Stikete, kritete. I love that. Say it if I had children. Say, stikete. Stand firm. So, and then he concludes with this beautiful blessing. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope. Beautiful words. Comfort your hearts. And strengthen them in every good work and word. Don't live in fake news. Don't live in FOMO, fear of the future. Be comforted. God loved us and gave us through grace eternal life. Comfort your hearts. Strengthen them in every... Stop sitting around feeling worried and depressed about the future. Get off your butt and do some good works. Serve other people. Stand in the word of God in the service of God and of his church and his people. This is what Paul says we should be doing. This is a wonderful letter, isn't it? So modern, so relevant. Reject fake news and FOMO. Stand firm in the faith we have received. And so every Sunday we read the scriptures. You know, Anglicans, we read the Bible more than anyone else. Four readings, Old Testament, Epistle, Psalm, Gospel. Do you know in the early church, we know from the writings of the early church fathers, they wouldn't read four Bible readings, they would read seven or eight. The early church when they met, they would read two Old Testament readings, two epistle readings. They'd read the gospel reading and a couple of psalms. They were soaked in the word of God. We'd be like, oh, it's so boring, you know. They were renewing and standing firm in their faith that the apostles had passed on to them. So this is the, the message for today. No more fake news and FOMO. I'm going to go to the next uh, slide, Miss uh, Lani. Thank you. Uh, how to pray. Uh, I just want to quickly mention this because we have 10 minutes in small groups. I would really encourage you don't get in a group of seven or eight. It's just a way of hiding. Okay, Get in a group of three or four where you can share something in 10 minutes. When you pray, pray naturally, briefly. Don't be weird when you pray. Okay, Naturally, briefly, simply, often. It's better to pray two or three times one sentence than five minutes a long sentence and then no one has the time to say anything. You understand what I mean? Some of us pray really long. It's selfish. 
Give other people time. Pray for a, a sentence or two. That let someone else pray for a sentence or two. Then let's, I know you don't mean to be selfish, but it's just selfish. Let someone else have the mic for a minute. Okay, thank you for laughing. Okay, um, <laughs> next slide. You know what I'm talking about. Next slide. Here's a couple of questions. Have you ever been troubled by fake news or taken in by a scam? Question two, have you ever had a fear of missing out? Question three, how would you advise a young Christian to avoid fake news and FOMO? Let's get in groups of three or four. You, you've got nine minutes, if the Sunday school got the message. Make sure you introduce yourself to start with. Tell people your name. Include anybody who's new in your circle of three or four. What's your story of fake news? This fake news is pretty funny stuff.
Okay, um, the children are beginning to return. Chris and Tony, as they come in, can you send the children to their parents? Just keep an eye on them as they come in. Direct them, help them to find their way to their parents so we don't have chaos at the back. Friends, it's time to conclude with prayer. If you haven't prayed yet, please say a concluding prayer. The eight minutes is up, sorry. Somebody should say a concluding prayer. Okay, the children are coming back now. Let us uh, gather the children together with us and we will join together in our confession. Let us pray together the words of this corporate confession saying, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive what we have been, amend what we are, and direct what we shall be. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Hear these words of absolution. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. That's a good prayer to say amen to. Amen. amen. That's the declaration of your forgiveness in Christ. Always good to say amen to that. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another with a shalom, the peace of blessing of Christ. Peace be with you. Let us uh, sing our offertory hymn, All Heaven Declares, the Glory of the Risen Lord. This is our offertory hymn. Boys and girls, please go to mum and dad and sit with mum and dad. Mum and dad, please take the children to your seat. Thank you. 
gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We declare together, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we pray, sanctify these gifts by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son. We offer our prayer and praise, Father, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessing and honor and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our sacred Christ taught his disciples, we are confident to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Dear friends, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. As usual, we invite you, if you are baptized and believe in Christ, you're welcome to receive communion. If you and in which case, hold out your hands and teach your children to hold out their hands for communion. If you are not baptized, or your children are not baptized, please cross your hands on your chest as a sign that you wish to receive a blessing when you come forward. Thank you. Thank you, boys and girls. Please stay with mum and dad at this time. Do not run around. Also, can we please keep the conversation to a dull roar? Let us show respect for the body and the blood of Christ. Thank you.
we pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for coming today. Last Tuesday was All Saints Day. So in honor of all saints, all the saints which you are, we're going to close by singing the sound of the saints.